value when we open our doors and we open our hearts to one another across our differences. This stole that I'm wearing, that I wear quite often, is called a peace stole. It it has on it representations of many of the religions of the world, including Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity and Judaism and Islam and many others. It was originally designed by an artist who gave the first one to Bishop Desmond Tutu, who wore it during the millennial celebration in South Africa after the time at the end of apartheid. Uh, Then she made 200 more to try to spread to religious leaders around the world to wear as a testament of the world's religions being a source of unity and not division in this new millennium. And so I wear this stole this morning as I invite my good colleague, Imam John Ederer, to come to to our pulpit and share some words of wisdom for us. If you want to come forward at this time, too many people will once again, in a moment like this, confuse extremism in the name of Islam with the religion of Islam. Thank you for being here. It's a real honor. I appreciate it. I called, called you up. You can just stand there for just a second. I just want to say a few words and then invite you into the pulpit. And those who would confuse extremism in the name of Islam with Islam itself are exactly what the extremists would like us to do. And we do so at our own peril. So I've asked the imam the religious leader of the Islamic Society of Tulsa and the Al Salam Mosque to join me this morning to share his views in a response to the events of this week and terrorism and extremism. Thank you for being with us. Let's give the Imam a round of applause. Our beloved Prophet. He used to begin almost everything that he did with a certain phrase. The Holy Quran, each chapter begins with a phrase. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of God, who is merciful and compassionate. That is the root of our theology. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. And in these times in the post 9-11 world, as people living in a very confused state, in spiritual turmoil, in social turmoil, in political turmoil, unfortunately we see people who have not had a chance to learn their religion. They don't have any leadership. And they're born into a reality that seems to be hopeless. And Satan, he loves to bring misery his way because misery loves company. I want to start by just saying that I remember when the the Malaysian airliner a couple years ago vanished. And I remember one statement watching one of the uh, mainstream media newscasts where the lady just said it. I don't think she thought about what she was saying. She said, well, there were no Americans on that flight. Almost as if the rest of them didn't matter. And I have people in my community 
asking me in an emotional struggle, in a spiritual struggle, Imam, does the mainstream media of the West not know that in the last two weeks, and actually one day before, as was mentioned by our up-to-date universalist community here, we need to expand this community. In Beirut, there was as gruesome, if not more, a gruesome attack. And the victims were Muslims. And the story that is pretty now being confirmed that a whole plane of people in Egypt was taken down. In Baghdad, these same characters blew up themselves in some place over there. And in Syria, 500,000 people have been killed over the last four years. And we don't hear a big uproar in our media over this. So that's why we say all lives matter. My plea to you in my small opportunity to stand on such a great pulpit where such great people of true piety and sincerity and God consciousness have stood. I will say it is as was mentioned in the previous prayers and in the uh, young lady's beautiful uh, appeal to us from her family. It is of the utmost importance that we get to know each other. There's a very famous verse of the Qur'an which is foundational in our understanding as Muslims of the relationship between humanity. O oh mankind, I have created you from male and female, and I have made you into many tribes and nations so that you may come to know one another. And the greatest and most noble among you are those who are most pious. And God is omniscient and aware of what is in the hearts of the people. This verse carries so many different lessons. I'm not going to get carried away as they put a microphone in front of me. <laughs> but I promised Marlon. The reality is, is that we are one human family. We are a people who have so much in common. And if we get to know one another, we will see that. When we really break down the barriers and we get to know each other and we get to understand each other's feelings and families and joys and hobbies, we see that we are a very, very, very similar people. And if we can build very good relationships. We can talk about those things that right now maybe are the reason why we're not getting to know each other. So I appeal to you that we go out in the name of God, being conduits and ambassadors of His mercy and compassion, and that our love and that our concern for humanity, it is that which overcomes and overpowers the hate and the bigotry and the ignorance. There is a famous statement that our prophet told us, peace be upon him, that God called out to the universe upon creating mankind, my mercy, my compassion, supersedes and overarches my just retribution in my displeasure when mankind slips up. Thank you so much. Oh.